listen to the generals the right wing ordered over and over, exasperated by the contrary naivete or worse, the lack of patriotism of anyone who dissented from that mantra. Listen to the generals. Our third story tonight, listen to this general. Lieutenant General Ricardo Sanchez commanded the multinational forces in Iraq after the invasion, including the period during which criminal human rights abuses took place at the Abu Ghraib prison, a crime for which seven low-ranking U.S. soldiers were punished, including Lindy England, later released from prison, and Charles Grainer, who is still serving a 10-year stretch. The military civilian leadership remained untouched by the various investigations until the Senate Armed Services Committee report found that torture techniques authorized for use on U.S. detainees at Guantanamo had trickled down to U.S. detainees in Afghanistan and in Iraq. The Army cleared Sanchez of any wrongdoing, but several reports blamed the abuses on failures at all levels, a finding shared by the former general himself. But last night, General Sanchez went farther than he has before, farther than many of the or any of the U.S. commanders in Iraq have gone. He said, and I quote, for those who claim that they listen to the generals, I support the formation of a truth commission for the American people to really know what happened. If we do not find out what happened, then we are doomed to repeat it. The general joins us now this evening. Lieutenant General Ricardo Sanchez, retired from the U.S. Army, former commander of the multinational force in Iraq. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Absolutely, Keith. Glad to be with you. You said last night we have to find out what happened. You were most, uh, your position in Iraq as the most powerful military man there after the invasion. What is it that you do not know that you think the American people, that all of us must know now? Well, I think, first of all, Keith, uh, we must understand as Americans uh, that this problem of inter interrogation goes much broader than just Iraq. Uh, this is a very complex strategic failure for America that stretches from the executive and legislative branches and their faltering in the development and oversight of the policy to the interagency, which uh, failed in the execution uh, details for that policy, and then it stretches down to the individual levels within the theaters where the abuses actually occur. Your point to uh, Huffington Post, if we do not find out what happened, then we are doomed to repeat it, seems to be an elemental one that has been missed by a lot of people who've analyzed the situation and said, no, let's just move on. But uh, there's a second part to that, almost a corollary. If we find out what happened and nobody's held accountable, does that also not probably guarantee that we're going to repeat it? In other words, what, can a truth commission alone prevent this from happening again? Well, uh, Keith, I think uh, a key point uh, for me to make is that the problem with this debate is that we have narrowed the definition of accountability to such an extent that it seems in most of this uh, back and forth that the only possible solution is prosecution. Uh, I think we have seen uh, conventional wisdom actually try and convict some of the players uh, in the press based on very sensationalistic arguments. If we do not get at the truth, which a truth commission uh, will address, in a very broad, objective, and unbiased manner, then uh, we will never learn those lessons. But the key point here is that in the aftermath of a truth commission, we must have all options open, from commendation to prosecution. Otherwise, America cannot move forward and uh, regain the moral high ground that we have lost. There was a criticism made of you as uh, the commander on whose watch the abuses at uh, Abu Ghraib occurred that you were seeking to burnish your own legacy. Is there an effect that the Truth Commission would have on that legacy, meaning specifically would something emerge that would serve in your favor? Is there a reason you would have a vested interest in seeing it happen this way? Uh, Keith, uh, I can't control the critics, and I don't try to control the critics. Uh, what I have to do is uh, I have to live with a fact that it occurred under my watch. I will forever be linked with Abu Ghraib. But I also live with the understanding and clarity that I have never compromised my honor and my integrity throughout this entire ordeal. And uh, the reason that I continue to, to speak about this is that uh, uh, I must ensure that the future leaders of America clearly understand the failures that occurred so that our soldiers are never abandoned on the battlefield again like mine were. Tomorrow, uh, General, Lieutenant General McChrystal goes to the Armed Services Committee. He's, of course, the president's pick to head the, the campaign in Afghanistan. Uh, what should we know? What should the committee know about, uh, about General McChrystal's uh, joint special ops teams in Iraq, uh, which were accused of abusing detainees there? Well, uh, first of all, I have tremendous faith and confidence in Stan McChrystal. He is a, a tremendous warrior, uh, clearly, in my opinion, the right choice uh, uh, to lead our campaign in Afghanistan. I was not in the chain of command of the special operations teams in Iraq. Uh, allegations did come forward. They were pr uh, provided to the special operations command, investigated, and uh, completed. Uh, I have faith that the decision makers, both political and military, have 
insights into the results of all of these investigations and uh, that they have made the right recommendation. If we should find that in fact there are problems uh, that surface in those investigations that are being overlooked, then we have a much broader problem in the integrity and the moral courage of our senior leadership, which uh, I do not believe is the case. The retired Lieutenant General Ricardo Sanchez uh, uh, provoking, uh, provoking, rec uh, recommending a truth commission uh, with all options open thereafter. He's also, of course, the author of Wiser in Battle, A Soldier's Story. General, great thanks for your service and great thanks for your time tonight. Thank you, Keith.